their support and for Maureen Sharkey's participation on our board. Uh, Barton Partners is the sponsor this morning, Seth Shapiro. Seth, thank you. Um, a new sponsor of the DBSGA, Mango Gold, Catcher and Fox, uh, environmental attorneys, Mike Gross is a new member of our board. Mike, good morning, thank you. Tim Haas, engineers and architects. Uh, Rachel Yoga has been uh, a cornerstone of our efforts at the DBSGA. Thank you. Uh, RLM architect, uh, Robin Murray is our is the president of the DBSGA. Uh, I'd like to thank Kaplan Stewart, uh, attorneys of law. Uh, Wendy Clifton, good morning. Uh, thank you for sponsoring. Uh, Arcadia Land Company, my company, um, uh, my father Joe, and my partner Chris are both here. And the DDRPC, the Delaware Valley Regional Planning Commission, uh, Barry Seymour. Uh, Over there. Oh, thank you, Barry. Sorry, I'm Bob. So thanks to all of our sponsors. Um, just for those of you who may not be familiar with the Delaware Valley Smart Growth Alliance, uh, we are a, a, a private, uh, not-for-profit 501c3 that seeks to encourage smart growth development in the Delaware Valley. Uh, we're a relatively uh, small organization, but we have a lot of friends. We are a coalition of 200 different organizations in the public sector, private sector, um, who have come together to embrace a common set of principles about uh, the built environment. The principal thing that we do at the DBSGA is that we recognize projects at the application stage. So how many of you, of you here are developers? Have you ever had the experience of feeling that there are, you have no friends when you've made that application to a municipality? <laughs> we are here to be your friend. That is, if your project exceeds the threshold of uh, the criteria uh, that our group has established. We have an independent jury which reviews these applications, and if your application exceeds those standards, um, not only do you get a nice certificate, but more importantly, you get an articulate member of our board or jury to come to a public meeting and speak out on your behalf. So it's a very powerful tool, I think, um, to allow those who may have a very narrow view to understand you know, the broad implications of, of and, and positive implications uh, our group's been around uh, uh, since about 2005, I believe, when we were patterned, I'm sorry, uh, in 2004, but we were patterned after the Greater Washington uh, Delaware uh, Smart Growth Alliance. This is our website, and we encourage you to visit. So this morning's uh, presentation uh, and discussion is about the American dream or American nightmare, uh, housing after the Great Recession. If you approach a realtor, of course, uh, the American dream is the American dream of home ownership. Um, and home ownership, of course, was supposed to be um, you know, the path to prosperity and happiness. This is an image from Mad Men. This is Don Draper's home. And of course, everything is, of course, fulfilled um, when you achieve the American dream of home ownership. You have nice cars, um, you know, a well-trimmed suburban lawn, happy family. Uh, this house, Don Draper, doesn't happen to spend much time in, but his family and children happen to be there quite a bit. Um, and so this, this pattern of, of prosperity in America worked quite well from the Second World War um, uh, through to really uh, the midpoint of the, last, of the last decade. And homes were affordable in the post-war era, incomes were rising, and house prices steadily declined. It was our suburban ideal, and it became one of our primary sources of savings. So Americans could spend because home equity kept growing. And I think something that I'm sure Kevin Gillen, one of our speakers, can really comment on later is that in every recession, it was housing, the housing industry, that was the catalyst for resuming economic growth. This time, that hasn't been the case. Um, from the 80s through to the peak, we entered what I would describe as sort of the Baroque period of the American dream. Um, so after Paul Volcker um, uh, cured the inflation issues with high interest rates, interest rates then uh, proceeded on a very steady decline. We also had to help Wall Street, where we could securitize our mortgages, and before, you know, lo and behold, anyone, even those without jobs, could buy homes. And so houses got big, we had the advent of the big mansion, this lovely term curb appeal, as if nothing was, you know, beyond the front facade really mattered. And city living, in contrast, reached its nadir uh, in the early 90s uh, with the crack epidemic that afflicted many of our 
cities. I think what's so interesting about these images here, if you look at the image on the right, is that that living room could swallow Don Draper's house. And um, you know, so things got big and really went beyond the poor shelter to something that was much more about status and symbol. Uh, I think many of us are familiar with what happened with housing prices. They climbed and climbed and then really climbed in the last part of, uh, in the mid part of the last decade. And then came crashing down. The house prices have corrected about 30%. Home ownership, of course, kept growing, uh, peaking at nearly 70% in the midpoint of the last decade. And home ownership rates have come down. More people have uh, chosen to rent. Uh, a lot of people are no longer qualified to be homeowners. And I think the question that our panelists are going to comment on today is, are the changes that we're seeing a structural change, a permanent change, to our patterns of uh, consumption, of economic development, uh, or is this just a long pause? And we're simply waiting for you know, the halcyon days of the 1950s and 60s uh, to, come, to come back again. So uh, what we're going to do, as we've done in some past events, is we're going to do a short survey. We're going to make this a little interactive. Um, on your table in front of you is a green sheet of paper. And I'd like you to take a minute to complete this survey. And during the course of the uh, presentations today, we are going to actually compute the results and present them to you at the end. Uh, if you do not have a pen, be a good neighbor, and um, uh, your friends can uh, share it with you. And uh, what we thought is this would give us a sense of at least what this group thinks the future of the market holds. 